G'day guys and welcome to a massive video, a video that you guys have been waiting for, a video that I love doing every year. Um, I think two years ago I did it outside, I was going to do it outside today but the weather's been weird, the rain's on and off so we're inside today. Today we're going to be going through the NRL 2021 ladder prediction as well as a little bit of a season, season preview. I think I might hold off on Dally M and things, I might make a separate video um, at the midway point of this video so when we get to the top eight. Just before that, I will be getting into a giveaway uh, as well as a channel announcement there. So looking forward to that. We're going to be going through 16th to 1st. Who's going to get that minor premiership? Who's going to get the title? And most importantly, who's going to get that wooden spoon? Let's get into it. First of all, the dreaded wooden spoon in 16th position, and my gut tells me that seven or less wins around. Um, I'm not going to do an exact, I guess you could say, based on what I'm predicting, maybe a 19 losses with six wins might be accurate. And I'm going to go with the St. George Illawarra Dragons here. I think that the Dragons lack a lot of depth this season. Uh, in the Fords, they've recruited Poasa Fasumali um, from the Sydney Roosters. But I just think the loss of Frizzell is going to be huge. Now, Cameron McInnes was actually one of my picks for the top five for the Dally M. I thought he was going to have an outstanding season um, before he heads off to the Sharks. But obviously, that heartbreaking news for Dragons fans that he will be out for the year. And I just think that is a massive loss. I think that the leadership of Ben Hunt as captain will be good for him. As for the team... I'm not sure. I think it will build his confidence. He'll have a decent season. But I can't necessarily see the Dragons doing well. I've been on the Dragons the last couple of years about being close to finals. But I think this year is a year that they stay completely away from even the top 10. I just see them finishing right down the bottom there. And if not in the bottom, I'm pretty sure they're a lock for the bottom four, even though they have surprised us with some nice wins over the last two years in some very woeful seasons. I'm predicting the St. George Illawarra Dragons to finish off in the wooden spoon. Moving on to 15th position, and in 15th position is a team that I was very close to going with the wooden spoon. However, I did pick them last year, and I don't like picking uh, your premiers or your wooden spoon to be the same and getting it wrong back to back. So... It'll be interesting. I feel like there are a few teams that could finish second last runner-up, but I've gone with the West Tigers. I think that, just like the Dragons, they lack a lot of depth. I think they've had some huge losses in the off-season as well. Uh, Josh Alloyer is a huge one for mine. Harry Grant, I don't even need to mention how big of a loss uh, that one is. I also think they've come up with some decent players who could play some very good football. Uh, Luciani Leilua has absolutely been outstanding for the Tigers, so that, that kind of worries me in regards to the way they could go. I um, mean, in regards to the halves, it's going to look very different. Uh, Luke Brooks is obviously going to have a new halves partner with Benji Marshall, farewell in the club, another player who probably takes a lot away from that side. I just don't think there's going to be enough from this West Tigers team to make a run into the eight. I'd be surprised if people have the West Tigers in their eight. I wouldn't be surprised if they've got them in ninth because of that, but I just think they might have some good performances at Leichhardt. Uh, there's a very spirited team at their home ground of Leichhardt. But from an overall perspective, I just can't see a good year from the Tigers. And as I mentioned, I originally had them wooden spoon. It was only until Cam McInnes is completely out for the St. George Illawarra Dragon that I've got them runners up for the spoon and not finishing in 16th position. The next one might actually shock a lot of people and surprise a lot of people. A lot of people have this team uh, in their top eight. They had a fantastic season last year. They've announced that one of their greatest, which a lot of people are saying this team will go backwards once this player leaves. However, I don't completely think that's the case. And it's the New Zealand Warriors in 14th position. This team has been very inconsistent over the years. They have recruited very decent, in my opinion, over the off-season. A lot of people are actually tipping a uh, buy of the year to be Adam Fenor Blake, who makes the trip from the Manly Seagulls over to the New Zealand Warriors. Uh, they've also recruited Ewan Aitken, who may play in the centres as a starting role 
from St. George. I arguably think on paper they've got a pretty decent team. I just think the travel is... is I don't know. They said that there's going to be a lot of home games for them. And I just don't know if how the bubble's going to go with New Zealand and how everything is, is if everything's going to go as planned. I just feel like the Warriors are going to be a little bit inconsistent compared to last year. They're going to be a little bit off. Try and work out their halves and get them set for the future. They've still got uh, the, the Cody Nicarima and the Chanel Harris Tavita situation. Um, it's It's just. There's a lot of options to go with, and I feel like this is a team that's starting to go through a rebuilding phase, and we'll see why they need to go in a rebuilding phase. And that's why I'm sorry, Warriors fans, but I'm predicting the Warriors to finish in 14th position. Moving on to 13th position, the final spot in the bottom four. I've gone with last year's wooden spooners. I've gone with the Brisbane Broncos. I do not think the Brisbane Broncos will be back-to-back wooden spooners. There hasn't been much recruitment around the club, There's rumours of the signings of Billy Walters, and we could see a father-son combination as Kevin Walters takes over the Broncos as a new coach. There's a lot of respect for him around the club. A lot of those players have played um, alongside him while he has coached Origin, and I just think they'll be a bit better. Not a lot better, but a bit better. Uh, They're a team that's coming out of this rebuilding phase. They're still technically in it, you could argue, but I feel like they're starting to come out of it um, produce the right players in the right positions, but there is still a long way to go. And for that reason, I don't think that they are going to finish in 16th position again, but I see them being a bottom four team that do struggle for the most part. I think they may have an impressive part of the season where they go three or four wins straight in a row, but I just think that there won't be enough in this team um, from Milford, Croft, Asako, these players who have had some good seasons. I just feel like 2021 is not going to be a good year for the Broncos once again. And they're going to wrap up and finish the season in 13th. In 12th position, I've gone with the North Queensland Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are starting to show slow, very slow signs of improvement. I feel like they are a few signings off becoming back to a finals team. A lot of people argue if Valentine Holmes is in form and if Michael Morgan's fit, that this team will play finals footy. I just don't think it's the case. They're always clouded by injury. Uh, Tamalolo, he can never get through a bloody full season and it's becoming devastating to watch. Ever since they lost Thurston, it's been a very different team. Uh, there's rumours up in the air now that their uh, 5'8 Scott Drinkwater may be leaving the club, which would be a huge loss in my opinion. So I'm kind of hoping that he does stay, but... I think it's a chance that he does go. I don't think they finish bottom four, which they have consistently over the last few years, but I'm tipping them to finish in 12th position. I just feel like there is not enough from this team yet. They have some star players, names, but they're just not putting in those type of performances that the Cowboys used to put in. And their record at Country Bank Stadium to start is not great. Unfortunately, they started with a a loss to the Broncos and then beaten by the Rabbitohs as well. I think they played about 10 games there and won three last year. I think maybe one against Newcastle, maybe. And I just can't expect much from them. I just, I can't, a lot of people think that this is a team that will be fighting for the spoon. And I disagree with that. I think they're going to be better, showing improvement, showing some nice wins, but not enough to be close enough to finals footy. Do you guys think, let me know in the comments, do you guys think that the Cowboys will be closer to the 16th, 15th position? Or do you agree with me around this 12th, 13th? Because that's where I see them. I see them just making it out of the bottom four. And I could see them there, but not wooden spoon for mine, this, this North Queensland team. In 11th position, I have the Cronulla Sharks. Now, they're a team that consistently play finals footy. They were very lucky to be there in the 2020 season. And uh, the loss of Bronson Cherry has proved huge around the centre role. But uh, there is some fast wingers in Ronaldo, Mulatalo, and Sione Katoa. They've also got the X factor of Sean Johnson in their team. So I definitely can't, uh, I can't count them out to be a bottom four side. I feel like this is a team that will be inconsistent. However, they could be really good and put some 
big, and I'm talking big upsets. Like I could see them uh, playing a tough, gritty team, going in as a massive underdog and coming out 16-point winners. This is a team that has the right players around them. We also saw a lot of the young players get their chance to play against Brisbane and what they were able to do really surprised me in 2020. For that reason, I can't put them anywhere near that bottom four team. I feel like they can't make the eight. It feels weird to say it because they always do. We're always proven wrong every year by this Cronulla Sharks outfit. Paul Gallon's loss uh, was definitely seen in the forwards in the front row. They were getting beaten for points and dominated by teams attacking them. So I feel like it's going to be a decent season for them. However, I feel like they are going to drop out of that top eight, which I guess makes them frustrated. There's a lot of pressure on John Morris as a coach. I feel like he will be coaching this team by the end of the year. There's a little prediction for you. I feel like he's safe as a coach and he's going to do enough to get this team roaring some wins together, but not enough to play finals footy. And I'm predicting 11th, which I don't think is too bad for Cronulla this year. We're getting closer to the top eight now, and we move into 10th position, and this is a team that you probably thought I would have mentioned a lot earlier. However, that's not the case, and a team that has gone through a bit of a rebuild. They're a new-look team, and that is the Canterbury-Bankstown Bulldogs. I don't know how people are tipping this team to get the wooden spoon. The confidence of Kyle Flanagan and his 2020 season will be steering this team in the half really, really well. They've also signed Nick Kotrick, which is a huge signing. Raymond Fartala Mariner is coming off some supreme form. Uh, Josh Jackson, that win against the Rabbitohs in the second last round of the season, he's going to have confidence. I just think this team looks really good. I feel like Matt Burton may not play until next year. I kind of hope he gets to play in the halves with Kyle Flanagan around the halfway point of the season when trades are starting to be um, allowed of signings, but I see them going really well. I see them at one point in the season, they are looking like they are going to make the eight. That is how good I see this Bulldogs team going. However, unfortunately, I don't think they do make the eight. I think they just miss out as my prediction is 10th. I wouldn't be surprised if they do play final. And uh, this is a weird little factor, but years ending in four, they always seem to make the grand final. They're working towards something here, guys. 1994, uh, 2004, 2014, I'm telling you, 2024, the Doggies will be back in the grand final with this new look team that they've built around it. Uh, he's also injured for a little while, but Jake Avarillo is also huge for the side. He's been absolutely fantastic coming off a massive season, and he's a chance of partnering Kyle Flanagan there in the halves. They just need to come up with a quality hooker for mine. Um, and then I think they're set. I think they're looking like a good team, fast-paced team. They need to come up with points. Their defense is great. And I feel like they're starting to get the attack to do so with uh, Nick Meany, with Nick Kotrick. And I expect big things from Bulldogs. I'm taking them for 10th. Moving on to ninth position, just missing out on finals is a team that I had in my 8 last year in, I believe, 8th position. I had them just making it. And I think these two teams will be battling it out for a final spot between 8th and ninth. Maybe you could chuck 7th in there as well, just. But it is the Manly Seagulls. I think that Tom Trevojevic will be better. I don't think injury... I feel like at one point injury will get him. I don't think it will be like half a season hamstring, though. There's got to be something, though. There always is something. Um, I think Josh Alloyer is going to bring a lot to this team. I think the confidence of Origin win is going to help Cherry Evans a lot, even though I didn't think he played outstanding during Origin. Just the win factor, the mentality of being captain, um, I think it's going to help this side. They lose Adam Fanua Blake in the forwards, which is a really big loss there. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, they've also gotten rid of Danny Levi. So it'll be interesting to see who gets that hooker position. A lot of people predict uh, Lachlan Croker could be a chance to get it. I'm not too sure. There's a few different candidates and there's a few young guns coming through. Uh, Josh Schuster, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. I thought he was really good in his uh, games that he got to play. I think there were two or three, maybe two games during the 2020 season. Manly just were a team that choked in the 2020 season. Uh, that game against the West Tigers pretty much sums up 
their season that they had chances and they just let them go. And I feel like they're going to be a solid team, a unbeatable team, but I just feel like there's going to be teams that are in this eight that are going to get the better of them, get the advantage, and uh, and I, that's why I feel like they just finish outside of finals. But let me know, guys, because they are a very t- hard team to get a read on. Do you think that the Manly Seagulls will finish in the eight or outside the eight? I'm tipping them to finish ninth. So guys, before I announce my 2021 top eight, I want to announce a giveaway and a huge announcement. Guys, I have teamed up with coneheadclothing.com. Make sure you go and check out. They have some awesome shirts, not just NRL. uh, They've got NBA, NFL, you name it. I think they've even got some Oz Open, so celebrate the Oz Open with those. If you do put get an item, make sure you put in the E House 10, you will get a discount. This is my discount code. Uh, this will be included in future products, but I've teamed up with these guys to give away two shirts. There is a choice of four shirts, which I will show you in a moment, these designs, but huge announcement, Conehead Clothing. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Really looking forward to it. And guys, if you want that discount, use that code on the screen. Once again, the E House 10. So the first choice of shirt is the Broncos Powerhouse Wrecking Ball. Bang! Tavita Pangai Jr. Pangai Jr. Really nice design from Conehead Clothing. And this is option one for the giveaway. The second option goes back to 2019. Fantastic shirt, this one. Uh, You don't have to be an Eels fan to like this one. It's just comedy gold. It is the x-ray from Blake Ferguson after his match against the Canberra Raiders with his broken nose just completely off to the side. So uh, if you want a chance to own this one, this will be option two. Another really awesome design here by Conehead. And uh, I just want to say this is a bit of a spoiler, but I think this shirt will be hot. And why do I think it will be hot? I am tipping Cameron Munster from Munsters Inc. here, as you can see, to get the Clive Churchill medal in the NRL 2021 Grand Final. Whoa, there you go. The Storm are in the Grand Final. You know that now. And uh, this is option three, which is a really cool design uh, for the Storm fans there. And since tonight, as I'm filming this, is the Indigenous versus Maori All-Star who else but Greg Inglis, G.I., the Goanna, your fourth and final choice. This is an epic design. Uh, it was such a cool move when Greg Inglis scored tries and did this. So those are the four designs for the giveaway. I am really excited for this, guys, and what this means for the channel. If you guys do want to win a giveaway, make sure you let me know which shirt of the four. So the Bang Guy, the Munster Zinc, the Fergo X-Ray, or the Goanna, and let me know which team in 2021 will finish ninth. You must follow these exact words and write them as a comment, and the winner will be chosen just before round one. Before I get into my NRL top eight, I'd like to show you two shirts from Conehead Clothing designs that I really like that I have decided to cop. The first one for Newcastle fans, but I'm a uh, Ponga and Johns fan, of course. So Newey's finest, having a a schooner there is Andrew Johns and Caelan Ponga. And uh, the second one is Sivo knocking Tedesco the fuck out. And... uh, Yeah, no, these designs are absolutely awesome. This website is really cool, guys. So once again, if you do get a shirt, make sure you use code VEHOUSE10 and you will get a discount. Really looking forward to what this means and copying plenty more of these shirts. Now, let's get into my NRL top eight. So guys, with that awesome announcement out of the way, who do I think is going to finish in eighth position? Well, it's a team that I had in ninth for a long time. It's a team that I'm going to go against you here, Nick from Australia. Nick from Australia thinks are definitely not going to make the eight. I would agree. I was going down the same path. I definitely think that this team is becoming a little bit overrated in the sense that people are talking about the top four. I'm talking about the Gold Coast 
Titans. I think that the Gold Coast Titans are going to play finals football. I think it's too hard to ignore the likes of Tino Fasua Ma'ali. Uh, AJ Brimson had an outstanding season. If he's fully fit all year, that's going to be awesome. They've also re-signed their cult hero, Anthony Don, who's going to want to have a huge year, um, I think, to to play for another contract. Or if he, even if, if he retires, he's going to want to have a, a big season. Jamal Fogarty just looked outstanding, so I can't wait to see more of him. And big man, of course, David Fafita, coming from the Brisbane Broncos to the Gold Coast Titans. They have a really quality team. They just need that hooker. Not you, Cam Smith. Please, Ah. Uh, Oh, man. I saw that Cameron Smith was at the trial game for the Titans. There's been a lot of talk about him signing with the Gold Coast. I don't think it'll happen. But I do think the Titans make the eight. I think that they break this little bit of a drought that they've had, have a really good season. And I think the Titans just sneak into eighth position over the Manly Seagulls, who finish in ninth. In seventh position, I know a lot of you are tipping them to win the Premiership. And last year... I thought the same thing, and that's why my hype's gone a little bit down. Who have I gone with? I've gone with the South Sydney Rabbitohs. I think that they're definitely going to be a finals team. They're going to be a threat towards the title, arguably. They should finish a lot higher than this, but I just feel like they they struggle at some points of the season. They're a very good team towards either the middle or the end. But at the start, sometimes they take a while to get running, which we saw last season. And I feel like this could be a similar situation. I've got them in seventh. They probably will prove me wrong and finish a lot higher. They've recruited really well with Jacob Host as well as Benji Marshall. Uh, Josh Mansour joins the South Sydney Rabbitohs. This could potentially be Wayne Bennett's final NRL year as a coach. Who knows? So he will want that premiership title and he's got the team to do it. But I just feel like there's too much overhype. And I'm not buying into it. There was so much overhype around Parramatta after finishing in the top four in 2017, coming into 2028, 2018. We got the wooden spoon. I don't think that's going to be the case for the Rabbitoh, but I think there's going to be a bit of a similar situation where there's all this hype around the Rabbitohs to play in the grand final, expected to beat the prelim and, and do big things this year. And I think they're going to have a good year and I think they're going to play finals footy, but I think it's going to be like most years. I feel like Cody Walker, again, is going to be really outstanding and he could be pushing potentially for that Dalian medal. I've got him as one of my uh, dark horses towards the Dalian. I think the Rabbitohs are a very solid team and we've seen really good performances from them with their attack towards the end of the 2020 season. And I just don't know if they can back that firepower up for an entire season rather than having some games where they score 40 points, not a consistent thing like we saw towards the end of the year before they bowed out in the preliminary final against the Panthers. So, unpopular opinion. I think the Rabbitohs make the eight, but I've got them lower than the top four, and I've got them in seventh. In sixth position, I've got my own team here. I've got the Parramatta Eels. We finished in third in the 2020 season. We still have a lot of our players who were playing last year. Uh, Michael Jennings for mine is a huge loss. It's going to be interesting to see how the centres go. I feel like Tom Opacek will play in the centres, but towards maybe the end of the year, unless Opacek really does prove himself, Hayes Dunster may just get a shot in that jersey. Uh, there's rumours around Blake Ferguson that it's his final year at the club and he will not be re-signed. But for me, I feel like Dylan Brown's going to be the key to Parramatta. I feel like we've expected a lot from Moses and we've seen really up and down performances. I want to see Dylan Brown take his game to an X-Factor level and just become one of the best 5.8s that Parramatta has seen. And I feel like he has the potential to do it. We've seen his running game. He's so dangerous. We've got a really good forward pack up front with Junior Paulo, Nathan Brown, uh, Ryan Madison, and of course, uh, Regan Campbell-Gillard just had an outstanding 2020 season. So I do expect us to go well enough to make the 8 I just think that we drop off a little bit. It is upsetting to say, and I will probably be proven wrong, or we could get the wooden spoon. Who knows what comes up with the Parramatta Eels. Reed Marnie is a very good hooker. Um, there are a lot of positions that have been filled really well, and this is a very solid team, in my opinion. Uh, we've lost a few signings as well. Uh, Brad Takarangi goes off to Super League. We've signed... Uh, 
Bryce Cartwright, who will not play for the first four rounds with a broken jaw. We've signed Keegan Hipgrave, who provides a lot of aggression like Nathan Brown. So, look, I'm looking forward to that and what the Eels can do, especially at Bank West. We are a different team at Bank West, I'm telling you now. And uh, round two, I'm looking forward to going back to Bank West against the Melbourne Storm. What I'm saying from the Eels is that they actually do have a better final season, even though they don't have them making the grand final. Uh, they look good in finals compared to previous years, in my opinion. I won't spoil that, but I've got them finishing in sixth position. It's a team that definitely could finish higher and definitely could uh, miss the eight. They've got a lot of losses this year, and I'm talking about the Canberra Raiders. Now, you've got John Bateman, who heads back to England. You've got the loss of Nick Kotrick. Um, Corey Horspra and Corey Harawira-Naira, two very aggressive front row forwards, have been stood down by the club. Tom Starling has had a really good 2020 season. A lot of off-field drama, which is starting to get sorted out now. It's going to be really interesting to see if he starts in Jersey 14 or where he comes, because I, I think that Josh Hodgson gets the role back from him. You have to put Josh Hodgson back in this side. He could really be the key to opening up the Raiders' season. They've also signed Ryan James, who looks very fit coming into this season as well. Uh, Charles Nickel Klockstad is a fantastic player. Jack Whiten is coming off the Dally M medal. So there is a lot to like about this Canberra outfit. I just feel like fifth is, is a good spot to put them coming into 2021. There is a lot of losses. Uh, Josh Papali will be better than ever. He will have another outstanding year. And Joe Tarpany is looking really good, so I expect a lot from him as well. George Williams had a fantastic season, so it's going to be interesting to see whether he can back it up or whether a bit of second-year syndrome from the Super League comes his way. But for me, I've got Canberra finishing uh, above Parramatta, and I've got them finishing in position coming into the top four now. Yeah, there's one name you haven't heard, and that's right. I'm on them this season. In fourth position, I have the Penrith Panthers. Now, Penrith, really good season, going 17 straight wins into a grand final loss going down to the Classy Act of the Melbourne Storm, so no shame there for the Penrith Panthers. Nathan Cleary with an outstanding season and a lot of talent shown with Isaiah Yo, uh, Stephen Crichton. Uh, they fare well, Josh Mansour. They're definitely in for another big season. I've got them finishing fourth and dropping off just a little bit. I feel like these teams above them will be a little bit too good for Penrith. And uh, Penrith will go back to losing games, which will be healthy and which will help them in finals, in my opinion. But I just, I expect a lot from Stephen Crichton. I don't know why I expect him. Uh, there's a lot of second year syndrome seems to be a thing. And I think that is just going to be ignored. This player is one that I'm just keeping my eye on really, really closely. Uh, James Fisher-Harris has been in some really good forms. So I think he's in for another good season. I've got Penrith in fourth position. I don't think they go back-to-back -back minor premierships. They are definitely a chance of making it back into the grand final with the way they played last year. It's going to be really interesting to see Penrith this year and whether they can back it up. A lot of people talking about how they could be the new Melbourne Storm and clinically be there at all times in the top four grand final appearances and minor premierships, a new dynasty coming. And I don't think that's the case. But for this year, I've got Penrith back in the top four and I've got them in fourth position. What? What? Yes, that's right. Yes, I'm on this team. In third position, I have the new Castle Knights. Now, don't at me right now because I just think this team is going to come firing this year. Who expected Penrith to have the season that they had? This is what Newcastle are going to do. Newcastle are going to finish in the top four. Mark my words right now. Kalen Ponga is out for the first three weeks. That is a huge loss. They've signed Tyson Frizzell. Kurt Mann's looking like a quality hooker. Connor Watson's coming back from injury. They just have the right team with the right players at the right time. We've seen over the years that they can win six games in a row, consistently stay in that top four before they drop out. And I don't think that's the case. I think they're going to have a really consistent year. They're going to be very hard to beat at home. The Knights at McDonald Jones Stadium, just like Parramatta, seem to be a very different team. 
I'm expecting a lot from this Newcastle team. And I hope that I'm right. I could potentially be wrong. Let me know in the comments, guys. Do you think that this is one of the most outrageous predictions on the channel? Or do you agree with me? The Newcastle Knights are going to finish in third p third there, position in the 2021 NRL season and shock everyone as they are up there with the Storm and the Roosters in no particular order as I'm about to reveal my top two. I just think that this team has got it and they are ready to rock and roll. In second position, I've got the Melbourne Storm. This is a team I'm expecting a little bit too much from, I think, honestly. Um, Cameron Smith is a huge loss, as well as Tino Fasua Ma'ali, another big loss there. They also lose Vinavalu, coming into Josh Adokar's final season as well. I don't know, but Craig Bellamy's still there, and Craig Bellamy is what this team is. I'm telling you, this coach is a master coach, and I still think they're going to be right up there. I've got them finishing in second, not claiming a minor premiership, still having a really good season. It's going to be interesting to see if they do have to relocate with everything going on at the moment with Victoria being locked down free and then into lockdown. It's really, really frustrating um, for those Melbourne Storm players and supporters, I think, whether they will be able to attend game as well as just be able to play at Amy Park. But I just feel like the Storm are way too consistent. Jerome Hughes um, could potentially be off to the Warriors next year, so he's another player that could have a massive year along with Josh Adokar, who obviously heads to the Bulldogs in 2022. Uh, Harry Grant has just been outstanding uh, in the NRL, and he gets his opportunity to play with the Melbourne Storm. I feel like he will get that chance above Brandon Smith, who will head on his way out, or maybe uh, continue to start in Jersey 14 for the years to come. But I feel like the Storm will be classy, up there again and as I mentioned I've got them in the grand final will they win it and who will they play well let's get into our minor premiere there's one team I haven't mentioned and that is the Sydney Roosters now this is a really weird season for the Roosters that I've got coming up we saw them go out in straight sets 60 to 8 uh, they have a lot of class in their attack now I'm going to let you know now that my top try scorer for the year is from the Sydney Roosters so I'm going to predict the team to get the minor premiership have the most tries. And I'm going to predict Daniel Tupo with 13 tries in the season. I feel like it could be higher. It's normally around 16, 17, but I just feel like not everyone will be at their best, I guess you could say. Or maybe new players will get opportunities to put the ball down. Daniel Tupo for mine, very good scorer. Uh, you got Josh Morris, you got Brett Morris, Luke Keary, and the new combination of of Sam Walker. Uh, you've got James Tedesco, who's just outstanding week in, week out. Takiyaho in the Fords. Uh, Boyd Cordner is out for the Roosters for the first 10 weeks, I believe, due to concussion protocol coming in for him. And I feel like this Roosters team has a lot of points in them. And we saw that last year, even without Tedesco, what they were able to do with the Broncos. At that point, though, they did have Kyle Flanagan. So it's going to be interesting to see this new halves combination, but I feel like they're going to be way too good in the 2021 season. I actually think that the Roosters, and this could change, but right now, I've got the Roosters being minor premiers, finishing with plenty of points, but when it comes to the back half of the season, just like last year, I've got them falling apart, and I've got them going down at least in week one of the final. Obviously, they will get that second chance, and I haven't thought completely about that. I might make a separate video about my, uh, my, I guess, who how the grand final gets there. I'm going to let you know now. My grand final prediction is the Melbourne Storm versus the Canberra Raiders. I think that both of these teams have very, very classy 5'8s who can get the job done and get them there. Jack Whiten against Cameron Munster. Charles Nickel Klockstad against Ryan Pappenhausen. As I mentioned, I'm tipping Cameron Munster to get the Clive Churchill medal. Even though I think the Roosters will be minor premiers, I think that the Storm will be your premiers for the 2021 season. And uh, 
that is a wrap guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know your full season prediction um it's been an awesome video to get through very long one guys make sure you do check out coneheadclothing.com i'll leave a link in the description once again make sure you comment which shirt you want and who will finish in ninth position thanks for watching guys make sure you do like and subscribe to the channel see you guys later and uh, as for a tip i'm going to go with the indigenous all-stars to win over the maoris tonight 28 points to 10.